What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, today, today's video, well today's video, we're gonna be talking about ultra running and I'm gonna throw some stats at you just because I came across an article talking about how ultra running has grown over like the last 20 something years. Many of you have probably run an ultra marathon and if you haven't already run one, I bet it has crossed your mind about running one. You know, once you've run a couple of marathons, it's just, it's that next step. It's that next step to push yourself. So the obvious next step is to ask you, do you have an ultra marathon in mind? Do you have a plan when you'd like to run one? And if you've run one recently, let me know how it went in the comments below. Before we get into the ultra running stats and how it's grown, first of all, this is my weekly training vlog and I do want to know about you guys and what you've done throughout the week. So was there anything you are especially proud of? Was there any big challenges that you faced with your running? Anything at all? So positive, negative, anything. That pretty much covers everything, right? Let me know about your running, how your week went in the comments below. Last week, I asked a question. The prize was this Path Projects logo t-shirt. The answer really didn't matter. All you had to do was be subscribed to me here on YouTube, follow me over on Instagram, and answer the question, which race distance is the worst? And the winner is Jim O'Connor. Jim O'Connor, congratulations. Jim's answer was actually the one mile. It doesn't matter what your answer is. I'm gonna actually agree with you because if you are pushing yourself for any race distance it's not gonna be pretty it's always gonna be hard I think if I were to answer it myself I might say a 5k you know the, the mile is the mile is tough because it's like an all-out sprint or at least it feels like a sprint for however long you're running it the 5k feels like a sprint from the start and you just have to hold on. Very painful experience if you're doing it right. Okay, so Jim, let me know. Send me a message in Instagram, DM me your address, and I will get this in the post and send it out to you. Okay, next up is next week's prize. So, same rules apply. I'm gonna ask you a question. All you have to do is be subscribed to me here on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, answer the question, and you are going to win this T-shirt that I am wearing right now. It's another Path Projects size large, and this one is the James Peak topographical map. Gorgeous t-shirt, gorgeous t-shirt, I love it. I'm wearing XL, if that shows you anything, as far as sizing goes. I do have a size large and that's why I'm giving it away because the size large is just, just a bit small for me. So this week's question, you have to write it in the comments below here on YouTube. And the question is, what is the best food to eat during a race? And I'm looking for wrong answers only. Go, right now, right in the comments below. The best food to eat while you're running a race, wrong answers are the right answers. All right, let's move on to some ultra running stats. Now I haven't run an ultra marathon in over a year. It was actually, you know what? The Keys 50 miler with my daughter Michelle was the last race I ran before everything shut down due to COVID. And I remember the night before that 50 mile race, it was touch and go because they'd already shut down everything because of COVID. And the reason that this race was allowed to move forward is because technically the race or the event had already started. So everyone had already come to pick up their packets, even though the race wasn't until the next day. So we got very lucky. We got we were allowed to run that race and everyone had a good time. But yeah, that was the last race that I ran, the last ultra marathon. I'm planning on running another one before the end of the year, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So stay tuned to the channel because you know I'll be bringing the camera with me. Who loves stats? Stats are just brilliant. I can't get enough. Tell me stats about even a subject that I'm really not interested in and I'm pretty into it. But when we're talking about running, I'm really into it. So did you know that female ultra runners are faster than men at 195 miles or further? So when the distance gets really long, the women crush the men. That's what I like to see. So just to give you some comparison, at the 5K distance, men are generally 17.9% faster than women. At the marathon distance, men are generally 11.1% faster than women. We can see a pattern here, right? As the distance of the race gets longer, the gender gap shrinks until at 195 miles, women pass men. I love it. it, just makes me so happy to see that. So right now, the time that you are watching this video, there have never been more ultra runners. In fact, in the past 23 years, the number of ultra runners has increased by 1,676%. So in that time, the number of ultra runners has gone from 34,401 to 611,098 ultra runners today. That's a, that's a pretty big jump. If you have ever doubted yourself that you could run an ultra marathon, I am telling you, you can do it. If over 611,000 other people can do it, I promise you, you can too. In the time we're living in now, more ultra runners are competing in more than one event a year. So back in 1996, only 14% of ultra runners competed in more than one event a year. Now, 41% of ultra runners do more than one event a year. I know the last year has been, been a bit dodgy, kind of thrown a spanner in the works, but on a normal year, I would definitely compete in more than one ultra marathon. 
If you are like a prolific ultra runner, constantly doing them, let me know in the comments below. My friends, if you like ultra running, if you like running in general, if you want to be an ultra runner, or if you are already an ultra runner, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It is hugely appreciated. It just tells YouTube, you know what? I like this video, maybe somebody else will. Send it out to them. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so right now. It's like giving me a pat on the back saying, Matt, Good one, mate. I want to see more of what you put out. Okay, so we already looked at that there are so many more ultra runners now than there were 26 years ago. Not really a surprise. Still fun to see those numbers, but not really a surprise. However, ultra runners are getting slower and slower. So if we look at all races, back in 1996, we're going to look at distance, age, gender. We're going to combine everything. That lets us know that the average pace of an ultra runner back in 96 was 11 minutes and 35 seconds a mile. Today, that time has jumped to an average of 13 minutes and 16 seconds a mile. Why do you think this is? Well, the people conducting the study, they just think that the sport, because it's become so much more popular, there's so many more people, we're going to get some unprepared people coming in thinking they can run these great distances. And they suspect that because the sport is more mainstream, it is attracting more unprepared people, and that is bringing down the time of everyone. With that said, I think it's important to point out here that ultra running, generally speaking, unless you're at the top of your game and you're going for the win at Western States or UTMB. It's about getting out there and completing the distance. It is not about pace. It's about time on your feet and doing something you didn't think you could. When it comes down to it, you running an ultra marathon is extraordinary. You tell the average person at your work that you're going to run 50 kilometers, 50 miles, 100 miles. They are probably going to come back with, I don't like to drive that far. But the same people come back with, I don't like to drive that far when you tell them you ran a 10K. This next one is really interesting. Now, when we're looking at everything as a whole, runners in longer distances have better pacing on average than the runners in shorter distances. You ever wonder who the fastest people are on average? South Africa holds that distinction with an average pace of 10 minutes and 36 seconds a mile. Sweden is in second place with an average pace of 11 minutes and 56 seconds a mile, followed by Germany with an average pace of 12 minutes and one second a mile. So most of my viewers come from a select few countries. So why don't we go over there, their average paces as far as the nation goes. The Netherlands, fourth place, 13 minutes and 20 seconds a mile. The average pace of ultra runners in the UK is 13 minutes and 32 seconds a mile. The United States comes in at sixth place with 14 minutes and four seconds a mile on average for ultra marathons. Canada is in 10th place with 14 minutes and 17 seconds a mile. And Australia, Australia is 11th with 14 minutes and 20 seconds per mile average pace for ultra marathons. If I didn't list your country, I am listing the study in the comments below, so go and check it out. In the last 10 years, the average age of ultra runners has come down. It's come down from 43.3 years old to 42.3 years old. All right, guys, there's a lot more data than that in the study. I encourage you to go check it out. I've linked to it below, but let's get into my week. My week last week, I had a pretty good week. A lot of easy running last week, but still, it's what I like. Started off on Monday with 10.6 miles, and man, we are well into the summer here, so every run I do is super toasty. Followed Monday with Tuesday, 11.4 miles. And just so you know, I've been, I've been testing testing a lot of hydration packs recently and last week was no exception. I've been using a hydration pack one or the other every run this week. So stay tuned to the channel. I've got some hydration pack reviews coming out over the next week or two. Wednesday, 7.6 miles. I did throw in 11 90 second repeats with 30 seconds recovery. So that was really the one time this week where I got my legs turning a bit faster than they usually do. Obviously it felt really good after, but then I wanted to take it easy. I didn't wanna, didn't wanna thrash my legs because I had a long run coming up in a couple of days. But first, Thursday. Thursday was an easy 7.1 miles. And usually when I'm running in the low sevens, it's because it's a work day and I have to have to get in that hour run before I go to work. Friday 9.5 miles. Saturday was my long run and I went out for 17.5 miles. You may have seen me post about it on Instagram. Had a hard time. Had a hard time. It was so muggy and I only bought 40 ounces of liquid with me and that just wasn't enough for the distance that I was running. So lesson learned, need to throw in an extra bottle when I'm going really fast, especially during the summer months. And because I ran that long run yesterday, I wanted to really take it easy on Sunday. Sunday I ran 7.1 miles and it was really just going out, shaking out my legs just so I feel good for the rest of the day. Brought the GoPro with me, so you know, just taking those running shots for Instagram. It was a lot of fun, gotta say, it was a lot of fun. That brings my weekly running total to 70.83 miles, which is about 114 kilometers. So pretty solid week, I'm very happy with it. Also knocked out 116 miles on the Peloton, which is about 187 kilometers. And that bike distance, that was actually Monday through Saturday. I actually took Sunday off from the bike. So my friends, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. You that are still here watching this, are truly appreciated. I post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.